Verily, thou art a hidden God, the God of Israel, the Savior. Those are words taken from today's Alleluia verse. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. In two famous Christmas hymns, the star of Bethlehem is mentioned specifically. From the first Noel comes that beautiful line, They looked up and saw a star shining in the east beyond them far, and to the earth it gave great light, and so it continued both day and night. And of course we have that beautiful hymn which many of us sang on Friday evening, Oh, we three kings. O star of wonder, it reads, star of night, star with royal beauty bright, westward leading, still proceeding, guide us to thy perfect light, unquote. But the star of Bethlehem is not just the subject of songs, it's also in the Bible, it's biblical. In both the Old and New Testaments, the star is mentioned as a guide, leading men to the light, the light of the world, and to salvation. But what was this star mentioned both in the book of Numbers in the Old Testament as well as the New Testament in the Gospel of St. Matthew? Now, scientists who have become our new high priests, scientists and astronomers have put forward a natural explanation. We're always reaching for the natural explanations. Some have suggested that the star of Bethlehem was some sort of fireball meteor, and certainly such a meteor could have been very bright, but it would have lasted just a few seconds as it raced across the skies. And so the mere flashing of temporary light would hardly be enough to lead the three wise men, the three kings, on such a long journey. Others have suggested that a comet was somehow the star of Bethlehem. Perhaps Halley's Comet, people saw these comets, though, however, as omens, not of good things to happen, but of evil happenings. The comets would announce natural disasters like a flood or a famine or even the death of a king. Comet as a heavenly sign of a newborn king would seem most inappropriate. More modern scientists have given a more simple answer. They say the star Bethlehem was some sort of nova or supernova outburst. These spectacular objects known as novas or supernovas are dying stars that produce incredible light, yet it's temporary light in the heavens as they blow up. But the problem here is that there's no mention in any ancient historical records of such an eye-catching event in the sky some 2,000 years ago. I mean, ancient men looked up into the sky a lot more than we did. They didn't have electricity back then. The night sky was their constant wondering. And finally, some scientists have suggested the star of Bethlehem was actually a grouping of two or three planets, perhaps Mars, Jupiter, or Saturn. Astronomers say it came very close together, forming quite a sight in the skies in the year 7 BC, they say. Others have said that the brightest planet in the sky, namely Venus and Jupiter, were somehow close together in the heavens in the year 3 BC and they were seen together in the constellation of Leo. Again, always natural explanations being given to explain reality of religion. But the Bible says something very clear. It says it was a star. It doesn't say it was a comet. It doesn't say it was a planet. It says it was a star. We're always seeking natural explanations. And so instead of seeing creation of God's wondrous universe as a wondrous act that only God could do, that he spoke things into being, we like to use evolution, Big Bang theories. Always explain away God, and let's get a natural reason for believing. But the saints teach differently. People with ST before their name don't believe that the star was a comet or some bunch of planets but rather they see it as a unique star created by God for the purpose of miraculously manifesting that a virgin was with child. A virgin conceiving and bearing a baby is not naturally explainable. It's a miracle. 
For the Jews, it was a prophecy in Isaiah that the Messiah, the Christ, the Savior, would be born of a virgin, literally. And for the non-Jew, the Gentile, like the three kings, the three wise men of the East, a star, a miraculous star, would announce this miraculous event of a virgin birth. The saints and teachers of Holy Church put forward a good case for a miraculous star. I mean, if you read the Bible carefully, and if you look at tradition carefully, you will find the star of Bethlehem acts in very strange and unusual ways. For example, as a song stated, the star appeared not only at night, but also during the day. And to the earth they gave great light, and so it continued both day and night. Well, stars don't appear in the morning sky, and yet this one seemed to. In addition, the star is clearly visible one moment, but then it disappears the next moment. While coming towards Jerusalem, the Bible tells us that the star disappears only to reappear once the wise men have their audience with King Herod and are leaving on their way. Furthermore, the star moved clearly. It moved with the wise men from the east. When they journeyed, the star moved on. But when they rested and stopped, the star stood still for them. It was kind of like the pillar of cloud, the pillar of fire mentioned in the book of Exodus that led the Israelites. And when they paused to camp, it stopped. And finally, the star moved and stood over the very house, the very cave where the Holy Family was residing. In St. Matthew's Gospel, it says the following quote, The star, which they had seen in the east, went before them. It led them until it came and stood over where the child was. I mean, how could we imagine that some planetary event happening literally a thousand light years away is somehow going to point out exactly where the Christ child is in the cave? It's a ridiculous thought. Now, I don't deny that there could have been wondrous things happening in the heavens naturally. But the fact that they were able to find a cave and a little baby in a manger exactly tells you that star was very close to the earth, very close to the very cave, and was shining right down upon that cave. And that is why St. Thomas Aquinas, the greatest teacher in the history of Holy Church, makes this point. Quote, the Bethlehem star was a newly created star, not in the heavens, but in the air near the earth, and that its movement varied according to God's will. Now, during this epiphany time, during this epiphany period that we are going through, we remember Christ's manifestation. His manifestation, his showing himself to the Gentiles, to the non-Jews, to those who were not part of God's people. At his holy baptism at 30 years old, our Lord would show himself as a son of God to the Jews. This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And with his first miracle at the wedding feast of Cana, our Lord would show himself, he would have an epiphany to his apostles by performing his first public miracle of changing water into the most perfect wine in an instant. God doesn't need to take time to age the wine. He speaks it into being. He would also have himself showing epiphanies to, obviously, the three kings, the Gentiles. With the Jews, our Lord manifested himself as a Messiah by fulfilling all prophecies written about him. But with his Gentiles, the wise men, our Lord would use a star, something in the sky, to draw men to himself. And the reason I go through all of this is because one of the more popular, one of the more popular DVDs today, shown all over EWTN, is something called the Star of Bethlehem. And of course, people are falling for this, saying, wow, science is able to allow me to believe in this star because it was a natural event. It was a bunch of planets up there, just a bunch of meteors or comets, not a miraculous thing. And so we fall prey to this because we have lost the faith. And as a result, we're kind of clinging to, please, science, please teach us what to believe, as opposed to actually reading the Bible and then adjusting science 
to what the faith actually teaches. But before bringing this sermon to a close, it should be noted again that the star of Bethlehem disappeared when it came to the city of Jerusalem. That is, this special miraculous star, it guide, the guide to the Christ child, was hidden from the view of the people who lived in the city of Jerusalem. In fact, when the wise men came to visit King Herod in the Jerusalem and asked the location of the newborn king of the Jews so that they might come and worship him, the Bible tells us that King Herod and all the inhabitants of the city of Jerusalem were troubled at such a report. Instead of celebrating, celebrating and joining the Magi on their journey to find the Messiah, the entire inhabitants of Jerusalem are lethargic. They don't seem to care at all. And absolutely none of the citizens of the holy city of Jerusalem went to visit the manger and the child. In fact, the only residents who came were armed with weapons sent by King Herod to slaughter the newborn king and all the little innocent boys of Bethlehem. The star that led the Gentiles to the Messiah refused to shine over the holiest city on earth, namely Jerusalem. The people of God in the Old Testament, with all their great patriarchs, especially Abraham, with all their holy prophets, with their holy temple and holy priesthood, they were in darkness. They were, by and large, not open to the coming of their very Savior. They knew the place that he was to be born. He was in the Bible, namely Bethlehem. And yet they don't bother to travel six miles to go see him. Though the kings might have traveled a thousand miles to come see him. As Catholics, especially for those who are cradle Catholics, We should learn a special lesson from this. We have an extraordinary amount of gifts. We have the full Catholic Bible. We have sacred tradition. We have the truth that saves. We have the seven glorious sacraments. We have the holy priesthood. We have the papacy. We have the charism of infallibility. We have devotion to the Blessed Mother. We have devotion to the saints, the Holy Mass, the most blessed of all sacraments, confession. Let us not grow lethargic or disinterested in the Catholic faith, lest we fall prey to the great heresy around us, which is naturalism. Explain everything away naturally. Our Lord didn't miraculously increase the bread and fish and feed thousands of people. He rather encouraged the people there to share their food with each other. Naturalism is is such a danger to us in this present-day world. The Christ child is here wondrously in the miracle of the Most Blessed Sacrament every single day and night. Yet how many of us actually make visits to the tabernacle and say hello to this prisoner of love who's waiting for someone to call upon him? The Star of Bethlehem stands right over this church, but do we even notice it? Let us not make the mistake of King Herod and all the inhabitants of Jerusalem, which was God's city at one time. But let us follow the wise men to visit our Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.